I know the truth. Everything is hard. Life is hard. Health is hard. Burpees are hard. Eating right is hard. Honesty is hard. Integrity is hard. Changing habits is hard. Parenting is hard. Because my job puts me in such close contact with people who are desperate to transform their lives, I also have the unique privilege of seeing what else is hard. Obesity is hard. Depression and anxiety are hard. Complacency is hard. Mediocrity is hard. I tell everyone, choose your heart. Perhaps the most important lesson that I learned in 2020 is that lessons are everywhere. And if you want to learn, you have to open your eyes and your ears and pay attention. Welcome to the Spartan Up Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Race. We are talking about overcoming obstacles. The same way we teach people to get over obstacles on the course, we will teach you here on the Spartan Up Podcast to get over obstacles in your mind. We are all about resilience, and today we're doubling down. Today we have something special for you, an excerpt from the new book by Joe DeSena with Dr. Laura Pence. 10 Rules for Resilience, Mental Toughness for Families. 10 Principles for Leading Your Family to True Resilience. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at Duralane.com. You know what makes me sick to my stomach? When I hear grown people say that kids have changed. Kids haven't changed. Kids don't know anything about anything. We're the ones that have changed. Frank Martin, head basketball coach at the University of South Carolina. Introduction, True Resilience. My name is Joe DeSena. I am a father of four and the founder of Spartan, an extreme endurance brand with events in 44 countries. I like to call us the Tesla of tough stuff, innovative, life-changing industry disruptors, who put on events that range from obstacle course races to three-mile sprints in elite stadiums to the Spartan death race. Days and miles of unexpected physical challenges that test participants' character and resilience. Let's be clear. My company is not about building biceps. It's about building better humans. Training, racing, and routine are all a Trojan horse for being ready for anything, including life's inevitable challenges. I am in the business of transformation. My goal is to rip 100 million people off the couch. I've worked on Wall Street, so trust me when I say there are easier ways to make money. But I discovered through Spartan that I could make an immediate impact on people. I was amazed to see that so many competitors are capable of stepping up and doing the difficult work of preparing mentally and physically for extreme challenges, even those who had seemingly given up on themselves. When given the choice to quit or keep going, Many kept going. I was hooked, and Spartan has become a thriving business. At the start of 2020, the Spartan team and I looked at the year ahead and thought, this will be the most extraordinary year in the history of the company. We had just acquired Tough Mudder, a successful obstacle course race company, and our competitor for many years. We had booked our Spartan World Championship in Abu Dhabi and had an entire schedule event slated for every corner of the globe. We had invested in bringing on talented employees in every division of the company. We were primed and ready for a tremendous year of transforming lives and helping our community get stronger, tougher, and more resilient. All the hard work, sacrifices, and time spent away from my family, working like an animal, were finally paying off. A kick in the ass wasn't on the agenda, but we most certainly got one. In March 2020, we were forced to cancel every Spartan race plan for the month. Okay, I thought, we'll be back up and running by summer. We can weather this pandemic storm. When July rolled around, we canceled the rest of our events for the entire year. This meant not hundreds, but thousands of races around the world, thousands of events that Spartan athletes had spent months training for. How could my company, which trains people to not social distance or isolate, to come together, get dirty, and get physically and emotionally tough, Survive this. Life doesn't always give you what you want or even what you need. Sometimes it just gives you obstacles to see if you are ready for them. You have two options when you face an unexpected obstacle. 
You can put your head down and shut out the world, pretend that difficult roadblock isn't there, or you can rise, look up, and take those obstacles head on. We did the latter at Spartan, and it has us better positioned and more ready for the future than I could ever have imagined. We made technological innovation changes to our business in only a couple of months in 2020 that I thought would take us years if they could even happen at all. We held firmly to our mission and sought to reach people with the message of accountability, change, and discomfort, even if we couldn't bring them together to race. We were forced to simplify, take a long look in the mirror, and do what we do best, persevere. Don't get me wrong, it was hard. We had to rethink how we would do every part of our business in the future, from racing to training to telecommuting. You might think I hated having all of those hard conversations and facing all of those hard realities as I mapped out an uncertain future for our company I'd given the last two decades of my life to. The truth is, at 52 years old, I really enjoy hard stuff. It makes me more resilient, more capable. I know the truth. Everything is hard. Life is hard. Health is hard. Burpees are hard. Eating right is hard. Honesty is hard. Integrity is hard. Changing habits is hard. Parenting is hard. Because my job puts me in such close contact with people who are desperate to transform their lives, I also have the unique privilege of seeing what else is hard. Obesity is hard. Depression and anxiety are hard. Complacency is hard. Mediocrity is hard. I tell everyone, choose your hard. Perhaps the most important lesson that I learned in 2020 is that lessons are everywhere. And if you want to learn, you have to open your eyes and your ears and pay attention. I believe the reason more people visited the Spartan website in 2020 than ever before, a year when I worried we would go under because no one would seek out the content of a brutal obstacle course company in the middle of a pandemic, is because we teach everyday people how to build a warrior's resilience and to persevere in the face of life challenges. But I'll be honest, the word resilience has become tough for me. It feels meaningless nowadays because it's been co-opted by every marketing team in every industry to draw customers in. Frankly, so have the words grit, toughness, and strength. Marketing companies would like you to believe that purchasing a t-shirt or product that says resilience grants you the gift. They want you to think that you can stare at your computer screen, study your way into resilience, and workshop your way into grit. Business blogs want you to think resilience is about productivity and optimization. No, I'm here to tell you that resilience is as pure a character trait as they come. You can't buy it and you don't stumble on it. It takes work. You know it when you've got it. I'm talking about immediately accessible survival of the fittest, endure the pain and power through adapt and respond resilience, the kind you need to protect your health and your family and to stay calm when the world goes to shit. I call it true resilience. Resilience is the ability to respond to some kind of adversity as if the adversity didn't happen. It's the ability to press on. Picture an athlete running 100 miles on dirt trails. At mile 50, the trail is suddenly covered in fresh snow. The resilient runner runs directly into the snowy path and keeps running as if nothing has changed. Head down, arm swinging, stride never missing a beat. Despite this new element, this adversity, the runner presses on. What I'm proposing to you in this book is the concept of true resilience, which is the ability to not only walk through adversity, but to use it to grow. True resilience looks similar to resilience. Our runner is still running directly into the snowy path without missing a beat. But with true resilience, the snow is a welcome sight. The runner sees the snow as an opportunity for growth and uses this new challenge as training for mental toughness and fortitude. The runner stomps through at full speed and emerges stronger and tougher than before. True resilience develops from a body and mind that have been carved out of challenges and failure. True resilience allows you to persevere with confidence and calmness through circumstances most people would consider overwhelming or downright impossible. Yes, you'll use true resilience in the workplace, but also with your family. And it will help you get through health problems, fitness challenges, anxiety, a shifting economy, everything. An unexpected terminal illness diagnosis for a loved one or yourself. A job loss. 
a bad investment of time or money, a breakup or divorce, a partner's irritating habits, an issue with your teenager, a lockdown, or, put more plainly, any of the unfortunate, ugly, steep, and daunting mountains of tough stuff that get placed in front of each of us in a lifetime. The ideas behind true resilience are not new concepts, and they aren't just for adults. Kids embody true resilience better than most adults when given the chance. You can find true resilience baked into the training regiments of Navy SEALs and Olympic athletes and extreme entrepreneurs and even regular people who care about making the most of their one precious life. True resilience is that special quality you find in the most unbreakable, disciplined people you know. The ones who don't get rattled, who show up early, smile when everyone else starts to stress, and radiate confidence and self-sufficiency. It keeps SEALs from ringing the I'm out of here bell during harsh training events meant to break even the hardest body and mind. It gave Spartan warriors the ability to endure strenuous circumstances and painful terrain on the battlefield, which proved essential for victory, even against armies that far exceeded them in number. It allows many of the men and women who run Spartan races to suck it up, get in the mud, crawl under the barbed wire fence, put one foot in front of the other, resist complaining, and even find joy and humor when they are tired, cold, and a little scraped up. True resilience is what propels them to sign up for the next Spartan race, even when they are still sore from the previous one. It is the kind of resilience that embraces, no, encourages adversity. And it is a character trait that I see less and less, even though it is more necessary for navigating the world today than ever before. A lot of us learn resilience lessons way too late in life. The reason? Humans do not want to feel discomfort. In fact, much of our life is spent seeking comfort. That is our downfall. Our utter devotion to what is safe and comfortable is a crack in our foundation that keeps growing with time until it is a vast and bottomless abyss, one we can't climb over or out of. The less we allow ourselves to feel discomfort, the less discomfort we can tolerate until a temperature-controlled bedroom that's one or two degrees off feels unbearable to us. Fruits and vegetables don't taste like food because we only eat processed junk, and we can't remember the last time we went for a run. Not a jog around the block, a run. Resisting discomfort in our own lives is keeping our kids, families, partners, coworkers, parents, friends, and everyone we interact with and influence from knowing the rewards of discomfort, too. When you snack yourself into a coma, your kids are watching. When you click the television on at 5 p.m. and off at 11 p.m. every night of the week, your kids are watching. When you commit to try something new, like a fitness class or nutrition program, and can't make it through the first week without quitting, you aren't just letting yourself down. When you give up, opt out, or make excuses for why you can't do this or that, even if you don't have kids around to bear witness, what values are you demonstrating for your wife, husband, friends, parents, or roommates? What could you be doing instead of sleeping through your life? This book was born in 2020, while I watched as families all over the globe faced the discomforts thrust at them and realized how insanely unprepared most people are for difficulty. How we handle challenges defines us and our families. While the entire world was asking, how do we make things safer for ourselves and our kids? I was wondering, how do we make kids more resilient and parents more tough so when this happens again, they are ready? We'll be back right after the break with the rest of this excerpt from 10 Rules for Resilience by Joe DeSena and Dr. Laura Pence. The book has just come out, and if you want to find out more, the book is available now. Find out more at the Spartan website at spartan.com slash 10 rules. First, a message from today's sponsor, Doralane. You know that knee pain can really slow you down. Sometimes that knee pain is due to osteoarthritis, a disease that affects some 14 million Americans. Learn about osteoarthritis knee pain and how to alleviate it at oaneepainrelief.com. 
You'll find information there about non-surgical, non-opioid treatments for osteoarthritis knee pain that may help delay the need for knee surgery. One treatment you'll find there is Doralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months of relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. It's indicated for the treatment of mild to moderate osteoarthritis knee pain when conservative treatments have not worked. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. Full prescribing information is at Doralane.com. Spartans say no to limits. You can learn more at oaneepainrelief.com. That's oaneepainrelief.com. Writing a book about building resilience while so many people in the world are social distancing and wearing masks, guiding their kids through distance learning and laptops and iPads, finding exercise routines that don't require CrossFit gyms and yoga studios, preparing food that doesn't rely on a driver to get it from there to here, and connecting with extended family through glass window panes showed me how important it is to practice being uncomfortable, even in the best of times. Pandemics don't seem so difficult when you have been embracing discomfort for decades. What's the gift on the other side of discomfort, you ask? True resilience. To be clear, resilience is not a skill we build to get through a difficult meeting at work or the last five minutes of a workout. That effort is commitment or determination. And, while useful, those are one-time feelings and instincts that allow you to just keep going. They have a place in a book about resilience. And you'll see me bring them up throughout these chapters. Most of us can point to a single moment in our life when we persevered. Ask yourself, is that single moment reflective of how I am all the time or how I am today? True resilience, as you will come to understand it in these pages, is a skill that serves you in every single challenge and moment of your life. True resilience becomes etched in the fabric of your being, a distinct part of your character. It is a gift that keeps giving as it impacts the way you think about everything, from whether to drive your car, comfortable, or jog, uncomfortable, the three miles to a meeting or appointment, take the kids outside to play even in the rain or in the snow, wake up at 5 a.m. or continue to stay up late watching television and sleep through the alarm, try that hobby or resign to always doing the same old thing. Stop doing the same old thing. An unbelievable life awaits you and your kids if you give the powerful ideas in this book a chance. If they make you a little uncomfortable, good. They're supposed to. These are the same ideas that have shifted the lives of millions of Spartan athletes and catapulted them to mental fortitude, confidence, and contentment. I know that I can weather any storm, and I'm confident that my kids can too. Can you say the same? True resilience is built on a set of rules that I'll outline for you in each chapter of this book. Each of these rules has served me and my family in innumerable ways. And my goal in writing this book is to remind and teach you that it's never too late for you and your family to know true resilience. These are the 10 rules for building true resilience. Rule one, you can't until you can. Rule two, earned, not given. Rule three, commit to no bullshit. Rule four, live your values. Rule five, fail forward. Rule six, dedicate to a daily routine. Rule seven, discipline breeds responsibility. Rule eight, into the wild. Rule nine, raw courage. And rule 10, ready for anything. No one can predict when you'll need to access a warrior's resilience. But if 2020 is any indication of the future, resilience will be the single greatest tool available to you and your family as we head into unknown territory. Look around. After resilience, leadership, health, and preparedness are the only survival skills we have. Depression has skyrocketed. Divorce is up. The rate of joblessness is frighteningly high. Ask yourself whether you are ready for what comes next. And if you are not, your kids sure as hell are not either. When I first set out to write 10 rules for resilience, it was out of concern for kids. 
No one reached out to me more when the pandemic began than parents, concerned that they hadn't prepared their kids for the challenges ahead. As it turns out, they were right. But the kids weren't prepared for the pandemic because their parents weren't prepared. You will notice as you read this book that I often bring up my own four kids and the kids who have gone through Spartan training camps when I talk about resilience. I bring up family leadership techniques and parenting guidance in almost every conversation I have with adults about resilience. This isn't by accident. Spartans had a belief, train the children to be better than we are. If the next generation isn't stronger than the current generation, then we failed them and ourselves. Making sure my kids are stronger and more resilient than me has been a mission of mine as a dad from the beginning. That means improving myself as much as I challenge them to improve and self-correcting when I feel myself sliding into more comfortable patterns. Throughout this book and throughout every chapter, you'll find ways to turn lessons for you into lessons for them. Every chapter in this book begins with a lesson for you, then shows you how to implement this learning in your family. Not enough parents even know where to start when it comes to helping the kids build resilience. I won't sugarcoat this for you. The big problem with kids isn't even about the kids. It's about our epic problem as adults. The pendulum has swung so far from authoritative that we don't even act like parents. We kowtow to toddlers. Oh, honey, you don't like spinach lasagna? No problem. Let me make you your own meal. And oh, while I'm cooking it, you go ahead and stream your show. We choose what's easy and non-confrontational. As I mentioned earlier, we avoid discomfort at all costs, both for ourselves and in the face of our children. From sugar to sleep, we are wired for indulgence, and we give in to it every time. But temporary feel-good hormones lead to a hard and painful crash when reality finally hits. And how many kids crash when they lose their first job, when a professor doesn't favor them, when they need to work harder to make the team, when they can't see their friends, and when they are forced to keep learning and growing without the pressure of a physical classroom? Unfortunately, kids take after their parents. They avoid discomfort, too. They prefer the couch. They reach for the snack drawer. They report a coach for benching them. They move home. They ask for rent money. They give up. The headlines about kids struggling with everything from obesity to mental illness to addictions angers me. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in five American kids is obese. Fifteen percent of college students are taking antidepressants. The kids are not all right. But the kids are not the root of the problem. They're the victims of indulgent, spoiled, mindless, soft parenting and a society that would rather spend money selling them vaping tools and video games than making P.E. a priority in schools. And it's the kids who suffer the consequences. Parents have been complicit with our society's corporatized, commodified laziness. Gaming chairs, baby iPad cases, it's all BS. We can and must create a tougher generation, starting with our own kids, starting with ourselves. We have to stop discussing issues, writing blogs, and joining more PTA subgroups. And we have to start taking real action. And that action begins with us, the parents. We can't expect our children to be healthy and resilient humans if we aren't. The incredible, important, and unrelenting job of being a parent isn't best accomplished by following a checklist of how-tos. It's by living and breathing the kind of human that you want your child to be, and then parenting and leading from the same position. Many of us are exhausted, stressed, and overwhelmed. I get that. But we have to step up. We have to create long-term solutions to seemingly short-term problems. Much of parenting is about the long game. Remember that the children that we are raising today will become the adults that we work with tomorrow. In so many ways, parenting itself is a practice in delayed gratification, an important skill we will talk about later in the book. 
temporary, immediately gratifying solutions may feel good now, but are the lessons that your child walks away with the kind that build resilient humans or just more satisfied children? I have the privilege of interviewing truly amazing people every day. They're unsung heroes, nurses and firemen, as well as billionaires and icons. But what always stands out despite their many differences is that at some crucial point in their lives, they worked extremely hard and overcame obstacles. When I think about what transformed me from a stubborn working class kid into the founder of a million dollar company, I go back to the lessons I learned in a rough neighborhood where I failed over and over again with little help from my tough as nails parents. As a teenager, I started a pool cleaning service that I eventually sold. For over 10 years, as I stood skimming and vacuuming pools for hours on end, I bore witness to the inner workings of about 700 homes throughout the five boroughs of New York City. I can tell you, in almost all of the households where the parents indulge their every personal whim and overprioritize comfort and safety, they suffered personally, and their families suffered in turn. It's not that the adults were negligent. On the contrary, they overprotected, oversupported, and overhelped their kids. And those kids struggled hard. Self esteem and self worth were non existent. Many got into real trouble. Some flunked out of school. And for a few, life took a really bad turn. In contrast, the kids from hardworking families, where the parents clearly value taking the hard route in their own lives, and didn't coddle their young kids, had to get up early, were forced to get an after-school job, and had to take care of younger siblings. These were the kids who tended to excel, grow, and make a good life for themselves. What I saw being a pool cleaner showed me the path to resilience and responsibility. Though I might not have realized it at the time, we all need adversity and discipline to meet our best self. Maybe you had a rough childhood, learned resilience at one point, but lost it when you chose the never-ending comfort of a soft life. So many of us wake up in our 30s and 40s realizing we don't recognize ourselves or how we got so sensitive and fragile. We're bored, fatigued, and anxious, but we recognize we have every possible comfort at our fingertips. How is this possible? Whenever I ask someone new to Spartan to tell me the last time they felt alive, they almost always recount an experience when they worked really hard for something. Why, when we reflect on tough experiences, do they seem like the happiest time of our life? Because we were stretching, growing, and feeling all of the pain that comes with discomfort. It's true that challenge is invigorating for humans. Discomfort is like oxygen. True resilience is the reward on the other side that keeps us coming back for more. This book is 100% based on a life lived. It's how I walk through each and every day of my life. I have my flaws and mess up like any other human. I'm not a perfect boss, nor a perfect husband or parent. But my commitment to the rules in these pages is unwavering. Spartan is a community committed to a lifestyle. And in my quest to spark a movement of self-transformation through Spartan and also through writing this book, I've had a lot of collaborators and teachers. One is my co-author, Dr. Laura Pence, PsyD, the official Spartan mind doc. I asked Dr. L to contribute to this project because of her depth of knowledge and authoritative perspective as a longtime psychologist who has helped adults, children, and teens overcome emotional barriers. I never want my advice about helping children to be careless or haphazard. Raising a family has been one of the most resilience-building experiences of my life. However, I also know how utterly wrong our first instincts can be as parents. While I have a lot of stories of transformation and resilience in action, Dr. L has the background and clinical experience to understand and corroborate what is going on beneath the surface. Her influence on keeping these pages grounded in truth has been instrumental. Agogi is a word that holds a special place in Spartan history and in my heart. It refers to the ancient Greek rite of passage that transforms a person from a child to a warrior. The word implies leadership, training, and togetherness. 
And those pillars are the force behind this book you hold in your hands. As we have witnessed through the pandemic, courage and healthy conditioning are about all we can count on. But I promise you, with some hard-won lessons inviting some healthy failure and turning losses into life lessons, you can prepare yourself and your kids for anything. You can transform yourself from child to warrior, and you can help the people around you do the same. You can start by making your bed and throwing down some burpees. Stop blaming the screens and start showing up and choosing the hard thing. Don't know how? Well, that's the point of this book. Joe DeSena. We hope you take this message to heart. Do the hard things. Become stronger. Become more resilient because it's so important. And if you want to find out more, the book is available now. It's called 10 Rules for Resilience by Joe DeSena with Dr. Laura Pence. Find out more at the Spartan website at spartan.com slash 10 rules. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at duralane.com.